How's it going tonight? What was your question? What's going on? Um, so I've been battling um, depression and anxiety. Um, they diagnosed me with bipolar um, and, and man- mania. And um, about six months ago, they I went to like psych doctors and they, they put me on meds. And um, about by the fifth med within a month or two, um, I started having heart problems and breathing issues. And I stopped the meds altogether um, because they weren't helping. And I got on the deliverance map. I got deliverance. I've been praying to God for healing. Um, I've been reading the word. I've been watching your videos. I watched Derek Prince's videos. Um, and I've started to have suicidal ideologies now. And, um, I just, I'm, I'm not sure like what I'm missing. Um, my heart, I like, I'm definitely having heart problems and they want me, my family wants me to get back on medication. They think that medication is the solution that I just need to get on an antipsychotic. And, um, unfortunately the meds are what gave me the heart, you know, where my heart's flooding, fluttering and it stops and I gasp for air. Okay. And, um, I just am like, I, I just, I'm not sure what I'm missing and was just looking for some advice. Yeah. Can I ask you, how do they diagnose you with depression or, um, did you say manic depression or mania? How, like how, manic, yeah, manic bipolar. Okay, um, how do they diagnose you? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. So you go in and you tell them, like, so I when I first went in, I was like, I'm really depressed, I'm crying. So they were like, okay, here's an antidepressant. And then it, I had a bad reaction to it. They switched me to another one. Um, I swelled up from it. Um, they switched me to a different one um, until I just kind of lost it and was screaming things and I couldn't control myself and um, just kind of like out of my mind like you know you see like people that go to psych hospitals yeah so they were like okay we're gonna hit you with um, harder drugs and of course I you know I grew up in a family that you know they still take antidepressants so I grew up in a family that that's what you do you take medication so I was like okay um and then it made the medication just made me like a zombie. And then one day I started having breathing difficulties and fluttering in my heart. And now I wake up, like I'll wake up gasping for air. I can feel my heart like skip a beat and stop. And um, I'm really dig. I so and I don't. They just tell you they they diagnose you based on what you tell them. Yeah. Like, and, okay, I'm having this, these symptoms. And this is the crazy thing to me is they give you these medications. Like you said, one medication, they have to give you another one to counteract this one. Um, there's no scientific research behind it. It's just basically you go, okay, I'm depressed. And they go, okay, let's give you a medication that makes you so much not like you that you don't feel that way anymore. Yeah. Because you feel 10 times worse because now you're a zombie and you don't even know what's going on. And then if it gets really bad, we'll just lock you up away in a mental hospital where no one will see you and you can just talk to yourself all day. Like it's it's beyond sad. It's a sad reality of the world that we live in right now. But the other reality is this. Doctors don't know what to do about demons. What is a doctor? Is a doctor going to say, oh, you have a demon? Of course not. In fact, sadly, pastors won't even tell you that. Like pastors won't even say, oh, it's a demonic spirit. Pastors will tell you, go to counseling, go to medication. But let's just look at Jesus, for example, okay? Forget about Isaiah, forget about the doctors, all that. Jesus is our savior, our Lord, the one that we follow. He's the guy. Like he's the guy of all the scriptures. This is the guy that we follow, right? Whatever he does, he's right, we're wrong. Jesus is the master physician. The doctors, I'm just I'm just giving you an, a, an illustration here, okay? The doctors are wrong. Jesus is right. I'm wrong. Jesus is right. Your pastor's wrong. Jesus is right. Above everybody, Jesus is right. Jesus comes to the earth in Mark chapter one. A guy starts screaming out in the temple and Jesus goes, that's a demon and cast the demon out of him. And then Jesus is walking by another guy who's in a graveyard. 
cutting himself who the city said oh this guy's manic this guy's bipolar he's schizophrenic we're gonna put him out in a graveyard and chain him up because he's beating people hurting people hurting himself right cutting himself trying to kill himself he's the bible says he's cutting himself with stones like all the stuff that you some of the stuff you're going through this guy's going through and we're gonna put him out yeah. in the graveyard in the mental hospital and jesus walks by and goes that's a demon and cast the demon out of him. And then in Luke 13, Jesus is in the synagogue and there's a lady there bent over for 13 years and she's tried every medication. No one can help her. All the pastors go, oh, just get more meds. Just get more. It's just, you're fine. And she's bent over. And the Bible says because of the demon of a spirit of infirmity. And what does Jesus do? He cast the demon out of her. Then there's a little boy. Are you are you catching my drift here? Um, that, yeah. What was, what was Jesus's answer? And I know you're like, well, my family medication, all that. I, I totally get it, understand it. I want my heart breaks for you. And I want to be compassionate is why I'm saying this. Jesus's answer to these crazy things people are going through was to set them free, to cast the demons out of them. Many people watching right now are going to go, oh, I already know Isaiah is going to say you need to get deliverance. Everything's a demon. No, I don't think everything's a demon, but I think a lot of things are. And so these things that doctors can't explain, pastors can't explain, Jesus explained them as unclean spirits that live inside of us. Just like I had unclean spirits lived in me. My unclean spirits that I got free from made me lust, made me do crazy bad things, sexual things and everything else, right? Made me shamed and addicted. They didn't make me want to kill myself. Well, actually one time a demon did make me try to want to kill myself. But for the most part, you are you have similar things. They're just different demons. It's not like it's crazier than mine. It's just their names are different. Their personalities are different. So for you, if I was you, I would go get deliverance. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. That's why. Not because I'm Isaiah Saldivar and all I think everything's demon. No, because if Jesus was here and he looked at you, I would think he would say, you need to get free, daughter. Just like the girl in Luke 13, he would say, you need to get free from this infirmity, this sickness, this disease, this demon spirit, this mental, I don't care what you call it. Um, God wants to set you free. So again, I know I'm making a strong point here, but my point is we can't be so quick to jump to medications, more medications, more medications. They're not going to heal you. Medication can't heal you. Yeah. It can only put a Band-Aid and a Band-Aid and a Band-Aid and a Band-Aid and a Band-Aid. But God says, I'm going to rip the Band-Aid off of you and I'm going to heal the actual cut. That's just not, it's just going to keep bleeding, right? Um, yeah. So that's where I would say, now, what probably happened to you? Because I know you're saying, well, I already went for deliverance. Here's what probably happened you probably got partial deliverance. So you probably say you have 10 demons, right? You go for deliverance, yeah. three of the demons get cast out and then you leave and then you call me tonight and go, well, dude, I'm still having all of these things are still going wrong with me. I'm still having all these issues in my life and I got deliverance. So maybe it's not deliverance. No, probably what happened is you got some deliverance and there's still say five demons there causing you to do these things. So you need to go through a serious thorough deliverance and i am speaking from experience i've done deliverance on people and the holy spirit has told me they still need more deliverance they didn't fully get delivered and i've told them hey i'm i'm not gonna lie to you i think there's still stuff there but we've been going at it for two hours let's take a break and let's do another session like there's nothing wrong with that and so for you that's probably what happened of course your family's gonna think you're crazy of course they're probably gonna hear this and go like oh that guy's crazy it's not real but i'm telling you i've seen thousands of people go through the same situation you're going through and God free them fully, including myself. I'm one of those people. So I would say for you, get on the deliverance map, find a church, whatever you can do to do and get some more deliverance until you're fully free. Because God, I'm telling you right now, does not want you to kill yourself, does not want you to battle your whole life. This is the devil. The devil comes to still kill and destroy. He's the one that wants you to kill yourself. That's the devil, not a doctor, not a medication, not Jesus, the devil. So how do we deal with the devil? We cast him out. That's how. If you're getting thoughts and things are talking to you and you're hearing voices and you're getting desires you don't want, it's absolutely a demon. I know, again, I know, I already know this is unpopular to pastors online and YouTube theologians that do nothing and have all this theory, but I'm telling you from what the gospels teach, Jesus wants to set the captive free. And he did that by casting out demons. It wasn't like a psych psychological freedom. It was real, real spiritual freedom. And the means was cast the demon out. So that's my heart. I know God wants to set you free, sister. I know God wants you to get to a place and you will. You need to hang on. 
You need to fight these demons and you need to fight for your freedom. The devil is a liar. Suicide is not the answer. Do not play games with it. Going to hell over committing suicide or taking your life is not worth it. An eternity. Again, there's no verse that says if you commit suicide, you go to hell. I have my own take on it. I won't go into detail on that. But sister, why would you risk taking your life and then oh, closing your eyes and opening them up and being in hell? Forever. Yeah, I don't want that. I yeah, don't forever. Want that for, sister, for a trillion years. A trillion years go by. And you're going to sit there in hell for a trillion years and go, why did I do this? Why did I let the devil do this to me? And people are doing this by the thousands every single day. And it's absolutely heartbreaking, which is why I'm saying this to you. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't go down that road. The devil's a liar. He's lying to you. Get freedom. Turn to Christ as you have and say, man, there's nothing worth my eternity, gambling my eternity, like, right? Like, let's just say there's a chance people that commit suicide go to heaven. And again, I won't go into detail on my thought on it. Why even gamble? If the, Say there's a 1% chance you go to hell if you commit suicide. It's still not worth risking, right? It's still not worth rolling right. the dice. And there might be a 100% chance you go to hell. We don't know. Again, I have my own take on it, but we don't know. Um, I wouldn't even gamble with it. The devil's a liar. I would be on the map today or finding a church today and saying, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to get free from this because yeah. it's not worth it. You know, it's, and I go, I know in the chat right now, people are saying, you don't go to hell if you commit suicide. And then others are saying you do go to hell. I, that's not what I want to debate. My point is that's not God's plan for your life. So there's just, it's, yeah. it's a lie from the devil. Don't get more meds. I, I'm not going to tell you to stop taking your meds. I'm not a medical professional. Let me just disclaimer there. I cannot tell you well, what to do. I'm not on them anymore. Okay. I, I'm not on them anymore. Yeah, they but want I me will to get back on them. Yeah, exactly. And I will say um, the meds are not going to help you. I can tell you that confidently. I'm not a medical professional, but I'll tell you right now, meds are not going to solve depression. And you can Google that. You can Google, do medications cure depression? No, they don't cure depression. They help, they band-aid depression. They help you cope with depression. And the doctor will tell you that. The doctor will tell you this helps you cope. That's what they'll tell you. It doesn't cure it. Just like there's no medication to cure cancer. Um, but God can cure you, cure you and heal you and deliver you and set you free. And it's beautiful. It just takes you stepping out and putting yourself in a place to get, receive that freedom and receive that deliverance. I know I went long here, yeah. but it means a lot to me. I don't want to see you kill yourself. I don't take it lightly. I take it so serious when you say, hey, I'm having these thoughts of killing myself. I'm being suicidal. Um, I know you don't want it. So you're not the enemy. No. You're not the enemy. It's the devil who's the liar. Can I pray for you? Please. Father, I thank you so much for my sister. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life. I just pray, Lord, right now that you break off every unclean spirit, every unclean power. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver her in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you would have your way, that you have an incredible plan for her, and that, God, you are going to bring, I know it, the right people around her to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring freedom, to bring breakthrough. Lord, we know that medication is not the answer, God. We know that you have the answer. You have the solution. Solution. And so, Father, I pray that you would touch her right now. Your peace, your joy, your healing power, that, Lord, you would heal her in her body, in her mind, in her soul, and that every unclean spirit, every unclean power would get their hands off of her now. In Jesus' name, God, do what only you can do. Heal her, Lord. Deliver her, God. Set her free. And Lord, just open up her eyes, open up her family's eyes, bring deliverance to this family, bring breakthrough to this family, bring wholeness, God. I pray right now in Jesus' name, the peace of God. Satan, you are a liar. We're on to your tricks. We, we just say right now that you're a liar. Spirit of suicide and death and murder and disease and addiction and depression and anxiety, you're a lying, unclean spirit and you must leave this woman of God in Jesus' name. You have no power, Satan. We break your power. We sever your roots and your ties right now in Jesus Christ's name. The blood is against you, Satan. You lying spirit, leave her in Jesus' name. Leave her in Jesus' name. You have no power. I command every foul spirit to come up and out right now. Come out of this woman right now. You have no power. Leave her in Jesus' name. You've been there too long. She is not your home. Come up and out now in Jesus' name. You foul, unclean spirit. Go. 
Go in Jesus' name. According to the word of God, come out of her now. Come out of her now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. You lying spirit. She doesn't want you. She doesn't want you. Come out of her now. In Jesus' name. Come out. You have no power. Come out. Come out of her now. The blood is against you, Satan. Come out. Go now. Every foul spirit, go. Every foul spirit, go in Jesus' name. Go. Go. Come out. Out of her mouth, into the abyss, now. Yes. Yes, you're leaving now. Every spirit of suicide, a depression, and anxiety, go in Jesus' name. Go. That's it. Into the abyss you go in Jesus' name. Right out of her mouth, into the abyss. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go, you foul spirit. Go. Go. Come out. Out of her mouth, into the abyss, now. Now. She's not your home. Come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Loose her now. Off of her bloodline, off of her family. Come out now. Go. All of it. Every spirit must go into the abyss now in Jesus' name. Go. 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 We're not playing with you. Go in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. The blood is against you. Let's go. Come out. Go now in Jesus' name. Go now in Jesus' name. Come on. Out of her mouth into the abyss. Out of her mouth into the abyss. Come out now. Every spirit of suicide. Every spirit of suicide. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Every spirit of suicide. Come out right now. Come out. Let her go. Come on, chat. Pray for her. All of it go now. It all goes tonight in Jesus' name. Go. 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 The blood is against you, Satan. Come out. All of it now. You're being... Satan, you are unauthorized to be in her. She's not your home. Go now in Jesus' name. Out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Into the abyss you go now in Jesus' name. Come out. Go. Go. Leave in Jesus' name. Stop your games. Leave in Jesus' name. You have no legal right. She's a daughter of God. She doesn't want you. Go find a new home. Go into the abyss now. Go. Go. Come on. Get out, Jezebel. Get out, suicide. Go. Your time is up. Get out. Get out. In Jesus' name. Go. In Jesus' name. Come on. Let's go. All of it now. All of it now. All of it now. Freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for freedom. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord, that you've come to set the captives free. That for this reason, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of, of Satan. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way in her tonight, Lord. This is a divine appointment. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you would fill her with your Holy Spirit. Father, where every demon came out, I pray that you would fill her with the Holy Spirit. Baptize her in the Holy Spirit, Father, right now in Jesus' name. I pray baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fill her right now, Lord. Rivers of living water, fill her belly. Father, fill her with the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus, that peace is coming, rest is coming, joy is coming. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do what only you can do, Father, tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, have your way. Thank you, Lord. How are you feeling, sister? I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you. Tonight was a divine appointment for you. You got set up by the Holy Spirit. It was a divine appointment. Yes, I did. Thank you so much. Keep going after your freedom. Keep going after God. God has amazing things in store for you. Do not let the devil lie to you. Do not take your life. We love you, okay? Okay, thank you so much. All right, look forward to hearing from you in the future, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thank God bless you. you. Have a good night. God bless. God bless you. Bye. What, guys, what is better than that? What is better than being used of God and doing what God's called you to do? and living the life that God has called you to live and seeing the captives get set free. I mean, there's really nothing better. Somebody that says, I wanted to take my life. I've been having thoughts of killing myself. I've had all the medications doctors can give and nothing's worked. And then Dr. Jesus goes, I can set you free from that. Like why, why be religious? Now, for those of you that say, what did I walk into? It's not biblical. Why is she screaming? I'm going to read you a verse that your pastor has been afraid to read to you. Okay. I'm going to read you this verse. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. For all of you negative Nancys, all of the religious people are going to make videos about this saying, oh, she got a demon cast out of her over the phone. I'm going to read you this verse. Acts chapter 8, let's go to verse 5. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Okay? Acts chapter 8, verse 7. Write this down. Many evil spirits were cast out. Ready for this? Comma, screaming as they left their victims. Let me say that again for all of you religious people in the back. Acts chapter 8, verse 7. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And then here's the kicker. And many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. Here's the kicker, verse 8. So there was great joy in that city. What? This is in the Bible? What just happened right now is in the Bible. Yes. It's in the Bible. Demons were cast out, screaming as... What were they doing as they left the people? The demons were screaming. That's biblical. So tell your mom, tell your kids, tell your wife. This is the Bible. Just because you don't believe it, practice it, or preach it, doesn't mean it's not in the Bible. This is what happens when people get free. What an amazing night. What a way to end the broadcast by somebody getting free. Thank you, Jesus. Not Isaiah, not a man of God. Thank you, Jesus, for doing the heavy lifting and doing the work and setting the captives free. Th this whole deliverance thing we preach about, casting out demons, think about this. Could be the difference between somebody taking their life and somebody not. When you read the newspaper and it says, 13-year-old killed himself, 20-year-old killed himself, 30-year-old killed himself, just know that could have been prevented by ca the casting out of demons. Like really, really, really in a practical sense, people are killing themselves and we're not doing anything about it. Meanwhile, we're arguing, I don't really know if a Christian could have a demon. How about you get off your tail and start stop arguing about it and start doing the work? I mean, this is why, guys, I'm so strong about this. And I just, I can't argue with these religious pastors and it just, it makes me so frustrated because people like this lady that calls in, 
are getting are killing themselves meanwhile we're sitting in our green rooms in our air conditioned buildings our air conditioned offices our air conditioned golf carts on the on the, at the country club golfing on saturdays while people kill themselves and meanwhile we argue let me say this last thing because i'm on a roll if you don't do deliverance praise the lord just stay on your golf course just stay on the golf course but don't get up and try to argue with guys like me that are actually doing the work don't start arguing and making our job harder just continue to golf i will leave you alone you keep you know golfing i'll leave you alone you keep doing your thing but just don't come over and make my job harder let me cast out demons and let us do the work and you can go ahead and keep doing your thing and play church but but don't argue and don't make it harder for us and get on stage and make videos like just stay over in your office and let us do what we're called to do that's it all right that's all i gotta say because why do you feel the need to make our job harder when you're not even doing anything just stay in your corner and we'll stay in our corner all right ladies and gentlemen i just had to say that i'm sorry i had to get that out of my system all right it's off my system go ahead and text me about it or right, i'll have some missed text messages here from angry pastors it's okay you're gonna make it um but i just my heart's broken because we we're not seeing people get free and we're just playing golf and uh and i just say golf as a, an illustration it's not golf's not a problem i'll go golf with you praise the lord i'm not very good but i'll go with you it's not golf is what i'm railing on it's you guys do you guys get it it's the idea that you're out doing nothing complaining about us that is actually trying to do the work maybe we don't have it all together maybe we don't have it all right but at least we're trying meanwhile you're doing whatever okay that's the point it's not golf golf's not bad all right i like praise the lord let's go golf i haven't been in a couple years but i would love to go with you um it's just the point of it it's the point of it that you're in your ivory tower while we're over here in the dungeon trying to cast demons out and you're trying to tell us all right anyway if you want to give you can the links to give her in the comments in the description i won't stay on long because i've been on long i've been on for an hour and 45 minutes when's the last time we did a call in that long i don't know because it's been that long but who cares god is good i still have a lot of stuff i got to do tonight i got to record videos i got work to do um yeah but here we are because i would rather see people get free than get off early i love you guys i appreciate you guys guys i hope you see humility in me i hope you see the compassion that i have i don't have it all together i don't know it all i'm not right about everything i've never claimed to be i'm just really really wanting to see people free and hungry to see revival and i don't care if i'm the guy that people laugh at and mock at and make videos about thank you for the free promotion okay if you need to use my name to get views go ahead and use it make your videos about me laugh at me do all your stuff um well we're still here and we're not going to stop we're not going to stop because it's what jesus did at the end of the day that's what i can stand on jesus did it okay so there's nothing you can say about it jesus cast out demons like so get mad at him but yeah that's why i'll just keep going after it and i appreciate you guys that you appreciate it i love you i appreciate you 